Welcome to the Simply Luxurious Kitchen. This season is all about comfort. With many French comfort recipes made in my own home kitchen, inspired by what I find in my garden, and kept company by my two furry companions, Join me as I share seasonal fare to elevate the everyday meal. And most importantly, discover how to enjoy stepping into your kitchen. Let's get started. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Shannon Abels and this is Simply Luxurious Kitchen. Today we're going to make a classic Breton favorite, the buckwheat crepe or buckwheat galettes. We'll talk a little bit about the history of why these are called galettes versus crepes even though they have the style and structure of a crepe. But what we're going to do is we're going to put gruyere, we're going to put brosciutto, <laughs> um, we could also put ham, and we're also gonna put an egg in the middle. So cheese, egg, and ham, a savory galette made of buckwheat, okay, buckwheat flour, and whole wheat flour. So again, a comfort food, and something you could have for breakfast if you wanted to, but it's traditionally enjoyed as an afternoon lunch meal or for dinner. And in fact, Bretons will often uh, pair it with a Breton cider, or you can pair it with an apple liqueur. So, if we're saying traditional. So all we have to do is mix up the batter. So I like to use um, a blender so that no lumps or bumps are in there. So I've already weighed out my flour. Um, I have three and a half ounces of buckwheat flour, and I have a half an ounce of whole wheat flour. Put those in there. I want a cup of whole milk, a cup of whole milk. And this is a French pancake, so to speak. Uh, if this sounds or looks familiar. Now I need an egg, one large egg. We also want a pinch of fleur de sole. Blend that up. Just make sure all the dough in the bottom, <laughs> or all the, the flour in the bottom is getting mixed in there. I love the texture of this batter. All right, so this is the batter. That's how simple that was. Um, now this recipe, I have sized it down because you can make three, four times as much batter, depending upon how many people you're serving. But this will easily make three big crepes, maybe even four, depending on how large you make them. Um, but this recipe was adapted down from a candle maker in France, whose candles I have in my house and have been having and enjoying them for a couple of years now, Curzon. So the founder of Curzon's recipe was shared um, this last year. I made a few adaptations, added prosciutto um, and chosen gruyere, but um, this is definitely a recipe that is a classic French Breton recipe. Now, what's the difference between a crepe and a galette? So galettes traditionally, in the sense of these pancakes, because we know there are other galettes as well, um, the galettes are savory. And galettes were made with buckwheat flour in Brittany, and they are made with just basic buckwheat wa water and, and salt. That was it. Um, it has evolved a bit since then. But as soon as you make it sweet, as soon as you flambe it, um, like a crepe Suzette, you have a crepe. But um, you definitely are gonna be making a crepe here as far as the thinness of it and um, whatnot, but it is the savory component that makes it a galette because it originates from Brittany. So let's go to the stove and make ourselves a galette. <laughs> 
So what I love about crepes, and this is a savory crepe, so technically it's a galette because it's made with buckwheat flour, is that they're simple. And um, the handful of times that I've had the opportunity to go to France, when I arrive at a place, whether it's having just arrived in my first walkabout in Paris, or for example, I headed down to Provence a couple years ago, one of my first outings at the, for a restaurant um, was a lunch, and I ordered a crepe, um, I, a galette, <laughs> um, a buckwheat galette with eggs and ham, and it was just comforting. It was French, it was simple, and it had the best reminder of what I miss from home because as you're still getting your sea legs and, and uh, you know, a bit of jet lag, that tastes and feels good but it's also French and they just make them so wonderfully. Um, so yeah, I, I think this recipe, it can be made for breakfast, it can be made for lunch, it can be made for dinner, pair it with a salad, um, but it's just so simple. So choose some really good ham, um, some really good cheese, and um, you've got a great meal that won't take that long to make at all. Um, and uh, French pancake, I guess we can call it, but uh, it's a French pancake and uh, they are delicious. So let's go make, let's go make the, the buckwheat galettes. Let's go make it. Think so? <laughs> okay, so we have our crepe pan and I have attempted to make um, crepes in a cast iron skillet. In fact, this cast iron skillet. And I've been successful every once in a while, but what makes it difficult in a cast iron skillet is the sides are too high. There is a reason why this, uh, the skillet is lower in um, side, so you can easily flip it. I do recommend having something similar to these tools. This will be the spatula that will get underneath there and hold that uh, crepe and make it easier to flip it, nothing fancy. And this is the spreader um, that spreads it out evenly on the pan. So I wanna put my pan to medium heat and you know your stove, so you know what medium would look like. It's a little too hot. And I'm actually gonna put a tablespoon, as soon as it warms up, of salted butter, salted French butter. Now, some might say, no, you should use unsalted because you wanna be able to season it on your own, and I completely agree with you if that's what you wanna do. But I love this butter so much. <laughs> this is my favorite French butter. I'll link it on the show notes. Um, that I love the subtle additional salt flavor. And it's not, you don't taste salt, you taste the depth of flavor in the crepe. Um, and it just is part of the recipe that I love. So we're gonna put a tablespoon on here, make sure it goes around. I'll actually use this to do that. Okay, there you go, get it to go all the way around. Melt it down, melt it around. And this crepe pan, make sure your crepe pans are seasoned. All right, and that's easy to do. Okay. Good. And it is a heavy pan. They're not always this heavy, and I'll link to a handful of ones that work just as fine as this one. But I do want this to be nice and warm before I put my, my batter on there. All right, so we have, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit more, my spatula. My, if it's been sitting for a while, the heaviness will sink to the bottom and the liquid will go to the top. You just want it to be nice and consistent. But in the, again, no, no lumps. This should be the consistency of heavy cream, not the consistency of pancake or waffle batter. Okay, because yes, this might be a French um, waffle, but this is not just any waffle. It's a French waffle, or pancake, I should say. Okay, that's looking good. Let me get one more edge there. Yeah, I'll go right in there, baby. Nice. So this is gonna make, as I said, about three crepes. So I want about a third of this in the pan. I just put it right in the middle. Nice. Just go around. Not too much. This is where I use my spatula. There we go. And you don't wanna waste time on this because it will start cooking and holding its shape quickly. But don't rush it either. Just gently push it to the sides of the pan. Beautiful. Oh, it's already getting there. Just make sure all the holes are filled because you're gonna be putting ingredients inside. Whoops, there we go. And if you, if you um, break it, like I just did with my spatula, 
you have more batter just move it around there we go and you're going to see the butter bubbling on the edges that's perfectly that's what you want so this is almost ready to flip and you can tell because you don't have any loose liquid anywhere but you do want it brown on the other side even though it's not going to be the side that everyone sees see how it moves like that that's a crepe that's ready to flip so i love i love seeing that and that also tells you that your crepe pan is seasoned so take this spatula and i'll link all these tools and just go right underneath all the way might not want you to go in one place so you try someplace else oops helps if i'm on the right side of it and look at that i'm gonna put more butter down more butter down. Ooh. See how my crepe is staying together? If your batter is the right, right batter, there we go, just like that. So if the batter is right, it will not break, it's perfect. Now what we're gonna do are add the details. So we have our egg. We're gonna put an egg right in the middle. There we go. Then we're gonna put prosciutto all the way around. And just break it up roughly. And you don't want it to go all the way to the edges because you're gonna fold it in like a little package. But this is all gonna be basically covered up with the edges of your crepe so it doesn't have to look neat. This is going to add a salty flavor as well. I love prosciutto for this. And you can use ham. Oh, yum. <laughs> now the Gruyere cheese. I'm going to turn my stove down just a little bit. It's cooking a little too fast. And so yeah, just play with it. Season the egg. That is all you have to do to make a galette. So simple. Now, just fold it. There you go. You can even take it off if you want. And I would even, you know, you know your stove, but a low heat's not gonna hurt you. Just slow down until you get the hang of it. Just like that. You're making a pocket. I love this. Just like that. And so you see the egg popping out. <laughs> and it lets people know, oh, there's an egg in here. Whoops, stay down there, little guy. And if the egg isn't entirely cooked through on the way you want it, I like mine sunny side, um, then again, reduce the heat and it will cook, the residual heat will keep cooking through the pan and uh, it won't continue to burn the, um, the galette and you'll be fine. So this is done in fewer than 15 minutes. Comfort food, simple, breakfast, lunch, dinner, pair with a salad, glass of Breton cider or sparkling wine or wine just in general and enjoy. So now we have it done right on over. And as you can see, it was very simple to make whatever hard cheese you have in the refrigerator will work just fine. Cheddar, Comte, any of those. Okay, when you cut in, you're getting ham, you're getting that egg, the end of it, and the cheese. Mmm, mmm. What I love about these crepes is that you have the crispy ends. You have the crispy ends because you folded it over. You're getting the end in every single bite. You have the egg, you have the ham, it's satiating, it's simple, and it's just, it's a comfort. So enjoy your day, enjoy your food, and enjoy stepping into your kitchen. Let's get another bite. <laughs> mm. Ooh, 
that egg is oozing out of there. Yum. Oh, let's get one more. Mmm. So this week's everyday luxury is a wine glass that I'm loving. Um, this was part of the giveaway this last um, August for the fifth annual French week on the Simply Luxurious Life vlog. But these are from La Roche and these are their bistro glasses. Um, what I love about them is that they are very sturdy. They're thick glass. I don't know if you can tell that or not. Um, so they're not gonna break easily and they don't hold a lot of liquid. So it really encourages sipping and enjoying and savoring. And you could put any wine you want in here, white, red, rosé, whatever. I tend to prefer these now that I have them in my wine cupboard um, over the bigger glasses because um, again, you're sipping them, you're savoring, and uh, you're not afraid you're gonna break them. <laughs> so La Roche Bistro wine glasses. Pause. Thank you.